Hi, I'm Dave Bradley from GamesRadar.com, and I'm here with the man, Ed Skrine, who you're going to know from Game of Thrones, The Tunnel, The Sweeney, and very soon from The Transporter Refueled and Deadpool. So, Ed, you're here at Comic-Con. Uh, you are playing Frank Martin in, uh, in Transporter Refueled. Let's get to the important question straight away. Can you take Jason Statham in a fight? Absolutely not. I, would, I mean, I've never... I, I could only say that I would take myself out of the equation. I may, I may be able to do a couple of stunt moves nicely, but I am a, I'm a very peaceful guy and a, no, I'm a teddy bear. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your character and what you're going to be doing. This is a, a prequel to the, the, films, the, the three films that we know and love already, right? Uh, it's not exactly a prequel. I mean, it's very much in the same vein as the, the, the Bond franchise that, you know, they kind of set it up in, in, in the same world with the same variables, but, but it's, a, it's a new story. Oh, right. So, so as you say, like Bond or like, like a kind of Doctor Who, the, the same character kind of thing. Um, tell us a little bit about the plot of Refueled then. You're um, going to be working with Loan, is that right? And, um, uh, and, and what do you get to do? Um, well, I suppose one of the interesting parts that, that, that makes it different is that my dad is introduced into it. Ah. Not my dad in real life, right. but my on-screen dad, uh, which is played by Ray Stevenson, the... Uh, Gentleman and um, lovely man, and 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 so he he uh, he comes into it pretty early in the story, and then um, I get a phone call from a new client, which is Loan, and uh, things take a strange turn, and she takes me out of my comfort zone, and uh, you know, being a man that follows rules, Frank Martin, I have to bend some of those rules, and uh, yeah, she 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 makes me compromise some of my rules, and things things go a little bit crazy from there. And so the, the trailer's out already, and I've seen that, and it's action-packed. Are you, is it a, f a film where you get to do a lot of, a lot of stunts? Uh, or uh, do you get to do a lot of uh, fighting, a lot of driving? Tell us about the, the physical side of things. Yeah, I mean, I got to do a lot of uh, the stunt stuff, and um, uh, I got to do a fair bit of the driving. A lot of the driving was too dangerous, so uh, you know, I wasn't allowed to do that. But um, that was a great part of it, you know, the education, you know, being able to learn martial arts. I came into it without a martial arts background, or, you know, I come from an endurance sport background, so the stamina was okay, but to learn the martial arts was um, a challenge, you know, but I had great teachers and coaches in Alan Figlars and, and his team, um, and, you know, put the hard work in and, um, you know, uh, and hopefully it's paid off. So that sounds pretty rigorous. I mean, what, what, what was the martial arts training like? How long were you, were you involved in that? What, what sort of things did you, did you have to do? Well, we, we, the martial arts that we did was, was a kind of mix of uh, Kali, which is a Filipino knife and stick fighting, Krav Maga, which is the uh, Israeli um, martial art, English boxing, uh, a slight bit of kickboxing in there as well, um, and a lot of close combat stuff, you know. Um, so we, I spent three weeks before the shoot working uh, five days a week, eight hours a day with uh, Alain Figlars and his amazing team, and um, we put the work in, you know, we really put the work in. There are no shortcuts, just uh, hard work and, and, uh, and discipline. And did you... Um have you, have you met Jason Statham and did you watch the, the previous movies? Have you taken anything from his take on the character? Um, I haven't met Jason. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Um, I did. It was important for me to watch the movies to gain a understanding of the franchise so that I could, you know, represent it properly for the fans and, and you know, stay true to the franchise so far. But it was also important for me not to dwell on it, you know, and to, to, to move on and, um, you know, just try and live each scene as honestly as I could. Does it, does it feel part of a continuity with the, um, with the previous films, or does it feel like a, a whole new beast? I mean, I think the fans will decide that, um, ultimately. But, you know, continu I think there's continuity except for the storyline, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, the, uh, the other thing that you're here at Comic-Con to talk about, which is very exciting, is you're in the, the superhero film that everyone's talking about. Uh, if you're a, a hero in The Transporter, you're a villain in Deadpool. Is that, is that right? Is that, how, is that the best way to describe it? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, you know, that, that's the kind of the joy of this industry. And, um, you know, to be able to play, you know, Frank Martin, who stands up so tall, his hair is so perfect. And, you know, I had a nice, you know, a nice head of hair when I did that. And I went straight to Deadpool and they said, right, shave that all off. And we got it really brutally short. And, you know, he, my character is very different. Uh, I play Ajax in Deadpool. And um, so the dynamic of the two is very different. And, uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's what's so wonderful about this industry. And, Deadpool was just, um, you know, the dream project to work on, you know. I remember previous projects, you sit in the green room and all the actors sit around and they say, you know, what's your dream project? And people sit there, you know, stroking their chins and me, I'd be like, superheroes. Right. I want to be in the superhero movies. You know, I've been a geek 
superhero geek since I was a kid, and um, you know, it's an absolute dream to to be a part of. Um, that's amazing. And you, were, you you say you're a superhero geek. Were you a fan of Deadpool, or if not, what 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 were your superhero idols? Yeah, I was a fan of Deadpool, but I was really geeked out about Spawn. Wow, wow. Yeah, Al Simmons. I mean, I loved him. I used to go to comic book conventions in a in a, in Baker Street what? when I was growing up, and, and I remember going and finding Spawn one and spending twelve pounds fifty on it, and thinking that was loads of money because that was weeks of pocket money. Um, X Men, you know, the Age of Apocalypse was 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 actually you know uh, incredible time for me, um, and um, you know all of the early um, Spawn stuff with with Overkill and, and, and all of those guys and. Um, you know, I've always been a big fan of Hulk. You know, I'm a big, big Hulk fan, and even now I'm, a, I'm still a, I'm still a geek with all this stuff. You know, I, I love the new Nickelodeon series of um, the Ninja Turtles. You know, and um, I'm, I'm, I still watch a lot of comics, and I still read a lot. I just read The Invisibles, right. which is a fantastic um, graphic novel, and um, the Saga series is brilliant. <laughs> I could go on, you oh, know. Oh, man. You're, well, you're in your, in your nirvana here, surely, right, with it, down here at Comic-Con. Well, Ed, thank you very much, and, and good luck with the both projects. We're very excited about them. Uh, thanks very much, Ed Skrine. Uh, you're watching Games Radar, and for more news about these films and uh, all the films at Comic-Con, keep watching GamesRadar.com. Thank you.